Hey guys, welcome back. Emily Jean, if you're new here, and today we're going to do another bookish quiz. And I'm a little bit nervous because this one seems really hard. We're going to be trying to guess the books based on a paragraph of writing. That's all we're going to have. Or the authors. I think we're guessing the authors. I hope there's multiple choice. <laughs> So if you want to take the quiz, hang out, see how I do, grab your coffee, tea, water, whatever you want to drink, and let's get cozy. Okay, can we identify a writer by reading a random paragraph? Not so sure. I think there's multiple choice, so that's going to help. Okay. All of these paragraphs have been randomly selected from best-selling novels. Can you match the paragraphs to the author who wrote them? Okay, first one. On his way out, a station wagon pulled in. There was a roof rack on top and the wagon was piled high with kids and luggage. The wagon had New York plates and the driver who rolled down his window to ask Harry how to get to US 21 going north had a New York accent. Harry gave the New York fellow very clear directions on how to get to Highway 21. He also served him and his entire family their death warrants without even knowing it. George Pelicanos, Stephen King, or Michael Connelly? Okay, so I almost want to say Michael Connelly because Harry and Harry Bosch, that detective series, is one of my favorite of all time. But this does not feel like Michael Connelly to me. So I feel like it might be a red herring, but also I might kick myself in the butt. It feels like Stephen King to me. I don't know who George Pelicanos is, um, but I'm going to go with Stephen King. Ah, correct. Yay. It's a paragraph from The Stand. Okay. Ooh, look at that cover. Um, that definitely felt like Stephen King writing to me. Okay. Next. Who wrote this? Alsana screams, claps her hand over one of her own ears and one of Clara's, and then almost chokes on a piece of eggplant. For some reason, the remark simultaneously strikes Clara as funny, hysterically, desperately funny, miserably funny, and the niece of shame sits between the two, nonplussed, while the two egg-shaped women bend over themselves, one in laughter, the other in horror and asphyxiation. What? What did I read? <laughs> okay. Zadie Smith, Toni Morrison, Carl Ove Nausgaard. Unfortunately, the only one I've heard of Toni is of Toni Morrison. So does this feel like Toni Morrison? I don't get this paragraph. Um, I'm going to say Zadie Smith. It's right. Okay. It's from White Teeth by Zadie Smith. I've never heard of this, but it did not feel like Toni Morrison to me, and I don't know the other person. So I actually didn't know Zadie Smith. I just went with my intuition there. So we got Zadie Smith. Okay, come on. Who wrote this? The fakeness of Eliza's way with men, the steady leakage of giggles, the gushing and the hair tossing was something a friend of hers could quickly come to hate. Her desperateness to please Richard became mingled in Patty's mind with the weirdness of the scrapbook and the extreme neediness it evidenced, and it made her, for the first time, somewhat embarrassed to be Eliza's friend, which was odd since Richard seemed unembarrassed to be sleeping with her, and why should Patty have cared what he thought of their friendship anyways? No idea. David Foster Wallace, Dave Eggers, or Jonathan Franzen? I don't know any of these people. This writing doesn't feel familiar. I'm just going to go with David Foster Wallace. Nope. Okay, it's from Jonathan Franzen's novel, Freedom. Okay, we got our first wrong answer. Who wrote this? I sit in a chair and think about the word chair. Should I lean closer while I'm doing this reading? <laughs> Bring my microphone. I sit in the chair and think about the word chair. It can also mean the leader of a meaning. It can also mean a mode of execution. It is the first syllable in charity. It is the French word for flesh. None of these facts has any connection with the others. These are the kind of litanies I use to compose myself. This feels like Margaret Atwood. 
I might be wrong, but I'm going to go with Margaret Atwood. Yes. Okay. It's from The Handmaid's Tale. I did not know. <laughs> this is embarrassing. Maybe not embarrassing. The Margaret Atwood wrote The Handmaid's Tale. I didn't know that. I don't think I knew that. But it sounded like her writing. Okay. Awesome. Who wrote this? Maria stood up and grabbed a beach towel from the deck and ran into the house with the towel clutched to her mouth. And a few later, a few minutes later, when pale under her sunburn and covered with cold sweat, she stopped the dry heaves and pulled off her bathing suit. She saw that for the 51st day, she was not bleeding. Ooh, somebody pregnant? Dennis Lahan, Dennis Lahane, Joan Didion, Sheila Hetty. I think this is Joan Didion. I got it. I did not think I would have gotten this many right so far. The, I mean, I would only get it because of multiple choices. Play it as it lays. Okay. By Joan Didion. Who wrote this? We ate the sandwiches and drank the chabalis. Chablis? <laughs> and watched the country out of the window. The grain was just beginning to ripen and the fields were full of poppies. The pasture land was green and there were fine trees and sometimes big rigor rivers and chateau off the trees. Ooh, Cormac McCarthy, Cormac McCarthy, James Patterson, or Ernest Hemingway. I feel like it might be Hemingway. Definitely doesn't feel like Patterson. My first gut instinct said Cormac McCarthy, but I don't really know McCarthy's writing. Oh, I think I'm going to regret this. I, I got to go with McCarthy. Okay, let me read it one more time. Ah, I'm going to go with Hemingway. Ah, it's Hemingway. Okay, Ernest Hemingway. The sun also rises. Cool. Okay. Who wrote this? Thanks. Nothing else, just thanks. He concentrated on the food. There would be no smiles from him at lunch. The less he said, the more uncomfortable they would be. He wanted them to feel awkward, guilty, wrong. He wanted them to sweat, to bleed. It had been their decision to boycott the wedding. It had been their stones cast, not his. Colson Whitehood, Whitehead, Paul Oster, or John Grisham? Hmm. I'm going to say John Grisham. Nice. John Grisham from The Firm. Oh, okay. Oh, God. This is a long one, guys. Who wrote this? In the hallway of Franklin House, ripped poster of a clockwork orange on his door. No, the next room. The Ronnie Regan calendar on the door. Is that a joke? In the freshman's room now. What's his name? Sam, Steve. It's so neat. Tennis racket on the wall, shelf full of Robert Ludlum books. Who is this guy? Uh, I think that's enough for me to get a vibe. Tom Wolfe, Brett Easton Ellis, Douglas Coupland. I'm going to say Tom Wolfe. This writing really reminds me of a separate piece, um, which was written by John Knowles. Just something about this writing. Uh, I'm going to say Tom Wolfe. Nope. This is from Brett Easton Ellis's The Rules of Attraction. Okay, now we know. Who wrote this? Darling, Cozy said, opening the door before he got to it. She was all made up, her complexion glowing, and he thought, as he often did, what a beautiful woman she was. Eyes perfectly almond-shaped, a startling symmetry to her features. Her crushed silk dress was cinched tightly at the waist and made her figure look very hourglassy. He hugged her, carefully avoiding her lips, painted pink and lined in darker pink. Amy Tan, Alice Walker, Shaman, Sh Shimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Uh, I don't think it feels like Amy Tan or Alice Walker. I have not read anything by Adichie. We're going to go with it. It is! Okay, Americana. Nice. We got it. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six more. Okay. 
Okay, who wrote this? Oh yeah, she said, rolling a ma mascara eye at me in the mirror. Listen to this. I was at the party last night, really drunk and sort of slam dancing, right? Everybody was crashing into everybody else. And for some reason, this girl twin was walking through the dance floor and pow, I slammed right into her really hard. So then she says something rude, like totally uncalled for. And the first thing I knew, I'd throw my beer in her face. It was that kind of night. I'd already had about six beers thrown on me, and it just seemed like the thing to do, you know? <laughs> I don't know what this is, but I want to read it. Donna Tart, Chuck Klosterman, Gary Scheidengart, Scheidengart, Scheidengart. I don't know, Gary. I'm sorry. I don't know any of these authors. Well, I know Chuck Klosterman. This is not Chuck Klosterman. I will be very surprised if it is, um, which means it probably is going to be. <laughs> I'm going to go Donna Tart because it just feels like a woman's writing it, which is probably really sexist to say, but for some reason it does. <gasps> it is Donna Tart, The Secret History. I've seen this book, but I've never uh, read it. Okay. Who wrote this? I loved helping Meg to dress or undress because her body still had the solid self-consciousness, the sweet indifference, something of the milky smell of a baby's body. Cynthia's body had long ago been pared down, shaped and altered into Cynthia. We all liked to hug Meg, press and nuzzle her. Sometimes she would scowl and beat us off and this forthright independence, this ferocious bashfulness simply made her more appealing, more apt to be tormented and tickled in the way of family love. Alice Munro, Joyce Carol Oates, or Philip Roth? I feel like Philip Roth. Ah, oh, darn. Alice Munro. The Progress of Love. Okay. Who wrote this? He took a moment to admire the Japanese car. Something like that would probably cost him more than a year's salary. He reverently touched the blue metallic paint. He noted a pair of aviator sunglasses hanging from the rearview mirror. There was a briefcase in the back seat and a green jacket next to it. Both vehicles license plates were from Virginia. David Baldacci, Jillian Flynn, John Green. Oh, I'm going between Jillian Flynn and John Green. My instinct says Jillian Flynn, but part of me also wants to do John Green. I'm going to do Jillian Flynn. Darn, neither of them. So I wasn't even going between the right two. David Baljocci, I've never read any of his books. Zero day. Okay. Who wrote this? It smells clean, which means you only smell chemicals, cleaning stuff, or perfumes. You have to know the pine smell is covering up shit somewhere. Lemon means somebody vomited. Roses are urine. After an afternoon at St. Anthony's, you never want to smell another rose the rest of your life. <laughs> okay. I've read Chuck Palahniuk before. Um, I think this sounds more like Bukowski. I haven't read any Irvine Welsh. Oh, it is Palahniuk. It's from Choke. Oh my God. This book is so disturbing. It's probably been 15 years since I've read it. It's so disturbing, but really good. Um, and I don't remember that. So it was Palahniuk. Oh, darn. Okay. Who wrote this? The concierge said he would call, but I'm also wondering, could it have fallen out somewhere? She looked helplessly at the marble floor around their feet. Sasha relaxed slightly. This woman was the type who annoyed people without meaning to. Apology shadowed her movements even now as she followed Alex to the concierge desk. Sasha trailed behind. I don't know any of these people. Jennifer Weiner, Jennifer Egan, Sloane Crossley. I'm going to go with Sloane Crossley. Nope. Jennifer Egan, A Visit from the Goon Squad. Okay, that cover is kind of cool. National Book Critics Circle Award winner. Okay, I think we're on our last one. Last one. In those final weeks, I knew better than to walk near my mother. Most of the time, she just looked at me with a stinky, with a stink eye, <laughs> but sometimes without warning, she would grab me by my throat and hang on until I pried her fingers from me. She didn't bother talking to me unless it was to make death threats. When you grow up, you'll meet me in a dark alley when you least expect it, and then I'll kill you and nobody will know I did it. Literally gloating as she said this. 
Yikes, what is this book? Jhumpa Lahiri, Elizabeth Gilbert, or Juno Diaz. I don't know Lahiri or Diaz. I don't think it feels like Elizabeth Gilbert, but I could be totally wrong because I've said that like four times in this video. Let's go with Lahiri. Nope. The Brief, the Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar. Wow. Sweet. Okay. So I got eight out of 15. What about you guys? I feel like that was pretty good. I'm happy with that. Eight out of 15. Um, if I hadn't had multiple choice, it probably would have been zero. And if I had had to guess the name of the book, definitely would have been zero too. But we got eight out of 15. So better than 72% of all other quiz takers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so if you took this with me, let me know. Thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate each and every one of you, and hopefully I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye, guys.